So hi everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Young from the Barnsley and Rotherham Chamber of Commerce. Today's webinar, Maintain, Manage and Maximise Your Customer Relationships, a 3D approach, is being presented by Han Andy Anselman. Morning Andy. Good morning, how are you doing Shane? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Just checking that you can hear me all good. So Andy's a fantastic keynote speaker and trainer who helps businesses and their people create competitive advantages by thinking in 3D. So before I pass on to Andy, I want to let you all know that we're recording this webinar. We'll be sending it out to our network and it'll also be uploaded onto the website afterwards. All participants are muted for the time being, except for Andy. But we want this to be as interactive and engaging as possible. So if you've got any questions, you can pop them in the conversation chat box or raise your digital hand and we'll pick them, uh, pick them up as we go or at the end, depending on where Andy is in the presentation. So I'll now hand over to Andy We'll begin the presentation thank you that's great cheers shane thank you well good morning everybody um i would actually like just to start off with just to, to unmute you if you could and i'm just interested if you could just tell us i'm not going around the whole room but just maybe let me know what your key challenges are when it comes to customers in this world that we're in anybody just like to just share with us any sort of challenges issues i'm not necessarily asking you to name the customers but what are some of the challenges you're up against in your business at the moment when it comes to customers um, and anyone should you put the hand up and let us know they want to say something and I can just introduce you. Rebecca? Yeah, hi. So um, I think our biggest challenge is that our customers are schools. So, um, <laughs> uh, so our challenge really, although schools have been open for key worker children, they're not actually working as they normally would. So, um, and really our customers, although they are schools, then our main point of contact um, in a lot of instances are school business managers and they are nine times out of 10 working from home. So all our communication with our customers whilst we've been in this situation has been via email and social media. So it's just been a case of us uh, working online really. Yeah, okay, cheers Rebecca, thank you. Andrew, you put your hand up. Yeah, just very briefly, I mean, obviously our customers are our members of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, the, the challenge we've had over the last eight, ten weeks is simply to keep them engaged and keep in touch with them. Yeah. I think we've done remarkably well, considering that uh, I've got eight staff or seven plus myself working from home. My biggest issue, though, to be fair, Andy, is I've got six staff on furlough. They've been on off since Easter. And, and the one thing that's really worrying me is how we how we get them back into the scheme of things, how we reintegrate them. Yeah. Because if we run through till the end of when, certainly the end of July, they'll have been out the loop for three and a half months. So whilst I'm obviously concerned about my customers, our members, I've also got other concerns about my furloughed staff as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'd argue maybe some of the things we're going to talk about this morning you can use the word people, staff, whatever, as well as you talk about customers. I think a lot of the issues are very, very similar. Um, and, and the things you mentioned there are sort of things that we're seeing quite a lot of people um, talk about and, and suggest that they're the challenges that they face. So what I thought I'd do is just sort of take you through um, this sort of presentation and I will stop at some point just to maybe have some questions and get people's thoughts and views on that. And um, we're going to talk about this whole idea of thinking in 3D by maintaining, managing, maximizing your customer relationships. And um, what we're gonna look at, and, and just to give you a bit of a summary of the, the key things we wanna talk a bit about is, what are we up against in these interesting times? And what we're seeing 3D businesses do to actually de deal with these things, and hopefully give you some ideas on what you can do. I wanna stress that the ideas I'm saying, I'm not saying because they did it, you can do it, because we're all in different situations, but it might just help prompt a few thoughts, ideas, and hopefully actions, things you can do to, to move this stuff forward, either in the short term, but certainly in the, in the medium term as well. Um, I'm always conscious when I start these things off, people ask the question, who the hell is Andy Hanselman? And I do like to get the bad news out of the way. Um, I'm a management consultant. Normally for telling me that, I make sure people don't just switch off, oh, here we go, some smart ass here start telling us all the things we're doing wrong. I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna share with you some ideas. And, and I help businesses, their people, their leaders, get better what they do, we're called thinking, thinking in 3D, which is all about being dramatically and demonstrably different. What does it differentiate you and your business from your competitors? And we'll explore what we're seeing some businesses do, and maybe more importantly, identify steps you can take to, to make it work. And my office is actually in Sheffield, 
although I am in Rotherham County, we live out at Thorpe Salvin, so we are within the, the, the parish, if you like, and we work with lots of businesses. I put these names up just to sort of show you the sort of stuff that we do. These are the conferences I speak at, and we work with lots of growing businesses in the area. And again, the reason I put this up is to say, I am no expert in one particular sector. Uh, I'm not here to tell you how to do your job, you know, your customers, your markets, your products and services, better than I ever could. I can just share with you some of the things that we've seen working in, in other businesses. And the way I do it is through speaking, training, consulting, doing away days, and now because we've had to, we're now doing it online too. And um, we a book all about it. If anybody's interested, come and talk to me about that and we can get you a copy of that. Well, I'll just let you know, at the end of this session, I will pull up the slides from this presentation from my very imaginative title website, andyhanselman.com. If you want to download them, please feel free to do that. I've got to write everything down. And a few other little bits and bobs I can put up there just to help you sort of make this stuff work. And this thing about dramatic difference, well, here's some evidence that I think we are in a dramatically and demonstrably different world. And has experienced that one yet, tensions with parents. Homeschooling, big challenge for lots of people. And I think it's quite clear some people are going about doing things in a very, very different way now that maybe we weren't doing before. And therefore, what we're going to do is maybe take a dramatically and demonstrably different approach. So I've already had this discussion about what we're up against when it comes to customers. And the things you've talked about are some of the things that we're seeing in, in lots of other businesses. But just see if you recognize any of these challenges. Um, challenge one for lots of people is just aren't any customers. And if they have got the customers, challenge two is that they're not spending. And there's evidence from all over the place that you know, nearly 80% of UK businesses see a drop in demand for their products and services. Travel has seen an 85% decrease in inquiries year on year. Car sales are down 97%. 46% of consumers are saying they're cutting back on non-essential spending. And we experience this, I'm seeing quite a few of my clients saying to me, the trouble is that the way their competitors are going about stuff, they're trying to give stuff away for free. And if you're not careful, you become into this complete battle about discounting and giving lots and lots of stuff away. Can you actually survive doing that? I think the whole economic impact that we're seeing creates lots and lots and lots of, of uncertainty. 82% of growing businesses say the coronavirus has had a negative impact on their business. And that actually is ongoing. It's the uncertainty that actually creates what's going on, maybe doesn't help anybody at all. 73% of growing businesses say it will continue to have a negative impact for the next three months. However, there is some positivity. Only 19% think the virus will still have a significant impact in 12 months' time. Only 8% in two years' time. So it's a short-term thing for some, but we don't know. But interestingly, I'm having some clients of mine saying one of their biggest challenges is that there are too many customers. They have furloughed people, they're stretched, and they're having to deal with those customers. They're quite interesting, particularly in people on the, in, the, in the IT sector, dealing with helping with people with computers, um, quite a few manufacturers dealing with the NHS. And I saw a, a report just came out recently about the number of inquiries on things like online education, keep fit, arts and crafts at home, gaming, massive, massive, massive opportunities, and home makeup, apparently. Um, Zoom, they themselves, 300 million users now compared to 10 million in December 2019. There are opportunities for some people in this world. Tesco's rendering their sales are up 30%. Um, Evan Cycles actually saw the indoor cycle equipment up 997%. And uh, Anne Summers actually identified a 25% increase when it might have been due to the penis pasta that they were offering early on when we had the pasta shortages. So there are opportunities for some people in this world. But it creates lots of uncertainty. I'm actually sort of saying, well, which way do we go as a business? How do we turn? And some of the things I'm seeing, first of all, just to sort of maybe hopefully you're avoiding these things, but some of the things I'm seeing, some of the wrong things that people are doing. I guess the worst thing is doing nothing. Just there in complete fear, absolutely not doing anything at all. But I think I've seen quite a few businesses going about shouting. I think if they shout loud enough, people will take notice of them. And if anybody here has been bombarded with things from certain suppliers, um, but then staying quiet. And the other one that I'm seeing that people are doing is maybe being a bit pushy. They're pushing things and being quite aggressive in terms of how they're dealing with these things. And I kind of thinking that will turn lots and lots and lots of people off. So we're going to get rid of those things and just give you a bit of background as to what we're going to talk about, the things we've identified. 
There are seven characteristics of 3D businesses, and I'm not going to talk about them all. I'm going to talk about characteristic four, which is forget CRM, think MCR. And I want to stress now, first of all, I'm not saying forget CRM, I'm not saying we don't want uh, a CRM system. CRM systems can be very, very good. It fails to amaze me, however, somebody said, I knew we've got this great CRM system. It's going to change what we do. And all that actually does is become a database with lots of names on it and nobody actually does anything with it. So maximizing customer relationships. What we talk about is proactively developing relationships that give the best to and get the best from the customers that you want. That's the sort of definition that we use. But because we were sort of in these dramatically and different times, I've just sort of changed this subtly and just really focusing about maintaining, managing, and maximizing your customer relationships. And we've got six ideas for you, and they are that, they're ideas. And I want you to think a bit about these things, work out what they mean for you. Um, I will prepare a very simple little uh, handout with all the ideas in there. So again, you have to write everything down, you have to download that and use that uh, once we've finished this morning. And the way we're going to take you through this is through a very simple three-step process called awareness, assessment, action. And awareness about painting pictures, assessment, don't worry, no tests or exams. Assessment saying that's what the best businesses are doing. How do we measure up? What are we doing well? Not doing so well. Then action, what are we going to do? And some of the things you'll hear me talk about, you'll say, Andy, this is all just common sense stuff. And it is. Um, just watch this. Some of you might have seen this before, please. But just, just watch this. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Just count them. Did everybody see 13? 13. Very good, if you did. But did you see the moon walking in there? Anybody spot it? Here we go again, just watch this. Just like watching United's midfield, this, Andy. Here it comes, just get ready. There he goes, walking across the screen. Those that have seen that before can't believe people can't see it. And the reason I put this up is to show that sometimes things that are obvious to some people aren't obvious to others. And if you're sat here going on doing all this stuff, then really I would encourage you to, to question yourself and, and challenge yourself. And um, if I'm honest, I get paid to go into businesses and point out the moonwalking bear. One of the downsides, sometimes you've got to give the bad news to the person who's paying the check and give him or her the bad news. But therefore, when I go through these ideas, I want you to really question, challenge yourself, and maybe get others in your team to, to do it. So these six ideas. And idea one is get in touch. And one of the things that I've noticed in this, uh, in this lockdown, um, businesses that I've been trying to get in touch with for years, I say I speak at conferences and events, and I've been trying to target for years from these big companies. And now it's all happening, it's fantastic. I'm getting fantastic emails from the chief execs of these large organizations telling me how they really, really care about me and my business. Or the classic one is dear valued customer. And I'm not saying we shouldn't send emails out to people, but the large corporate stuff, we can all do that. What I'm suggesting is what we need to do is be human. What are you doing to demonstrate your human side for a business? Do you actually personalize the correspondence? Do you do it in a way that works for your customers? So some things to think a bit about if you've not got in touch with your customers yet. And I said, I said again, I don't mean by lots and lots of blanket emails. Make it personal. Make it memorable. Can you do things that make you and your business stand out? This might seem a bit weird, but writing old-fashioned letters in this day and age can actually be a thing that makes you stand out. Personalised notes can actually work. The research suggests that customers in this downtown actually want to contact and connect with real people. And if there's no human interaction, they're actually very, very disappointed. And what they're actually saying is they want a level of friendliness from people. And certainly, interestingly, um, the, 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 in this research that was done, in the north, it was about 50% compared to 30%. So up here, we're even more, we need more friendliness. Then if you've only seen this, Vidyard, which is a great app you can actually get, you put it on your browser, you can actually send very short, sharp videos to your customers for free. Just do a video, send it to people, just personalizes it. Just different. It's different at the moment, when everybody's doing it, it won't be. But find ways of maybe personalizing your correspondence. 
the key bit for me is making it genuine. Because again, this is not dear sir or madam, it's doing it in a way that works for your customers. And this is a key bit. I was working with a law firm recently, and they've got quite a lot of maybe elderly customers. They want telephone calls. They want to hear a human voice. What are you doing to engage with your customers in a way that works for them? This was an email we got from um, Brian Daniels, who's an MD of Hydro Creative, who a design business in Sheffield that currently working on our website. And so it was a lovely email that came through quite early on from Ryan just sort of saying, hope all's well, anything we can do, let me know. And again, he specifically said, I'm not touching for work. And I just thought it really made an impact, a genuine way of actually getting the personalized human way across. So do we actually find ways to treat customers as people? So just to think about this, how human is your customer communication? And again, you might say, oh, I need it's very, very human. It is, of course it is, it's me. Well, just a question and look through it, some actions to consider. Review it, all of it. Go through all your customer interactions. And do they come across and demonstrate your personality and you as people? And the other one for me, again, was possible is involve all your people if they're around. You know, if I've been dealing with a particular individual, I'd like to hear from them rather than from somebody in accounts or from somebody in the marketing department. So again, one of the things you might want to think about here is keep doing it on an ongoing basis. Do it in a way that's not being pushy. Great story uh, that Norwich City, they actually got their players to uh, ring up their customers, their old customers, their season ticket holders, and ask how they were doing. I thought that was pretty good. And then to discover that Rotherham United went even better with the manager actually delivering food to some of their customers and fans. That was a great example of actually really personalizing the experience. Still waiting for Chris Wilder to turn up at my house. I've not done it yet, but maybe it will happen. Idea two, create dialogue, not diatribes. And what I'm looking at here is do we actually engage with our customers? Again, some research that was done to ask customers what is it they actually want from their suppliers. Interestingly, 77% said they want to feel more positive about their businesses, that they're making it, they feel more positive businesses that are making an effort to support them and the local community. Do they actually support frontline staff? Do they actually demonstrate how they're supporting their employees? And they said they should, shouldn't, shouldn't use the chain, same tone of voice. In other words, are you getting across how human you are? Do you actually demonstrate to your customers who you are, what you're doing? And do you sell positive stories? In other words, what people are looking for, they're not looking for sort of bullshit stuff, but they want stuff that's telling them how good things are. They want maybe to have a laugh. They actually want things that actually make them feel good. I can't help feeling that that's how and why Dr. Captain, now Colonel Tom has been such a hero. He envisages all those things. I don't think he has seen this, breaking news. He's clearly not doing that. But about, again, it's about being, being human. So some things you might want to consider. Educate your customers. Let them know about what you used to do, what you're doing now. Don't assume that they've already, they know what it is. Explain the steps that you've actually taken to help them to help your people, just to help your stakeholders. Do you demonstrate what you're doing? And again, find ways to engage with them. Obviously, you know, we are now using Zoom, we're using Teams, we're using Skype. Find ways of doing it in a way that works for them. We have a, a, a network called 3D Connect, which used, used to meet monthly, physically. We're now doing two weekly uh, sessions. We're getting people together, 25, 30 people. And people are saying they just like to engage with each other, hear how others are doing. ACAS, a couple of, at the beginning of the month, actually did a, a, an online Twitter Q&A. They actually got their customers, their people to actually ask questions via Twitter. There are lots of ways of doing it. Support Dogs, a charity in Sheffield, they do all, in the past, have done nearly all their fundraising face-to-face. -face. Suddenly found that they couldn't do that, so they came up with Plan B. And of course, lots of different things now. They've done virtual fundraising, and there are things like uh, Support Dogs, uh, they've actually had a talent show with dogs, videos of customers' dogs up there. They've actually had, um, a, they actually did have a karaoke competition. Now, if you're not interested in dogs, it's not going to do for you, but they've attracted lots and lots of new customers by finding a different way to engage with their customers. Uh, Barnsley Museum, the Cooper Gallery, they actually found that they couldn't get visitors coming. 
So what they've actually done is found lots of ways to interact with customers. One of the things they actually did was they got some of their famous paintings. I don't know much about art, but these are some of their famous paintings. Created jigsaws, created a league table of how quickly people could actually do it. They actually got other museums all over the place. They actually got a contact from New York saying you're doing a great job. Barnsley to New York, that's what this stuff is all about. Help and support them. Find ways to actually demonstrate your expertise and knowledge. Find ways to, ex to explore and actually explain what you do. Uh, Harry Potter, uh, Wizardry World, they actually came up with uh, some apps and an online program to actually help kids be educated via their laptops. FD Centre offered free phone call, complimentary video call to actually businesses to take them through some of the issues and challenges they're up against. Clearly, there may be an opportunity there from them, but actually, it's a way of actually engaging with customers. HM Architects and clients of ours, they've actually found that they can do online seminars and webinars with their customers. They've actually done planning meetings. They've actually found dramatically different ones for different ways of doing this stuff. Rejuvenated, and again, they're a business that sells collagen shots to lots and lots of small businesses. They found lots and lots of their customers, small businesses, were struggling. Their small gyms, their small uh, beauticians. They created a Facebook page where they could actually interact and create a community where they could shame, 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 share best experience with each other. They actually found ways of actually engaging with their customers. But if you are going to do this, a little way of thinking about this is what I call CNN. And CNN is to put yourself in your customers' shoes and think a bit about what's critical to them, what's nice to know, and what's noise. If you are sending lots and lots and lots of noise, all you actually find is they'll start putting blockages up. The critical stuff, the nice to know stuff won't get through. So think about your customers. What's important to them? What's critical? What's nice to know? So again, how well are you creating dialogue with your customers? And some actions to consider. Identify ways to do it. Review and redo your communication. Just look at what you're doing. Don't just do the old, old stuff and actually just tailor it to your specific customers. That might mean doing different things for different types of customers. And don't be afraid to do things dramatically differently. We've actually found the video thing is working really, really well. Demonstrate you understand where they're coming from. And a big one for me is demonstrate, highlight, and share your experience and your expertise. But don't aggressively sell. What I'd just like to do is for a minute is just to stop the sharing and just back to the group. Anybody here got any examples of things that you've done or are doing to engage with and communicate with your customers? Is there any things that anybody's tried to, that's, that's worked for them? Just anybody got any examples of things that have worked for you in terms of how you're engaging with customers? Angela. Hi, so um, I'm an employment lawyer. And what I'm finding at the moment is people are very interested in critical content because there's a lot going on. So a lot of my clients want immediate updates on the law and, and help in that respect. However, they don't have time for anything else. I've tried to do a few things, uh, you know, webinars, um, are you interested in this help? At Gunna Cook, which is the organisation I work in, we've put together these um, Tiger teams, which are, and we're offering free advice. So Tiger teams are made up of management consultants, finance people, debt recovery, and you can choose who you need to talk to and I've had nobody take me up on it. And I think the reason is, I think people are in critical, certainly my clients seem to be in this crisis management mode. And it's quite hard for me to know what else I can offer them because what I'm finding at the moment is I might be looking after my current clients quite well because they're getting all their critical advice from me. I don't feel I'm taking the opportunity as an employment lawyer to grow the business because I'm struggling to engage with people because I feel like they don't have the time. I think it's interesting, going back to HLM Architects, one of the things that they were telling us was that they've got, they can almost split their clients into two groups. One are those that are just almost head down, panic, not doing anything. And the others that are the ones that want to engage them. And they've actually said, we're just focusing on those because you can't, you know, you can bring the horse to water, and that sort of thing. And it's, it's just about recognising, I think you're there for them if, you want, if they want you. One of the things they also found, however, was that just sort of sharing some of their expertise, little tips and techniques, they actually did it in very, very bite-sized chunks. It just sort of said, does this interest you? And that just hooked a few more people in. So it's maybe just, we talk about amplifying, asking questions that maybe amplify the pain a little bit. And just ask, just drop a couple of questions in there to see if that actually helps. Just, oh, that's something I'm interested in, maybe have a look a bit further. But I think you're right, some people have just got blinkers 
open and, and, and headphones are not listening. But I think it's meant to focus on those that maybe are. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else got any examples of things that are working for them or questions that they've got on, on this stuff so far? Okay, well, I'll go. All right. Hello. We're a digital marketing agency, but we've made our social media a lot more informal, a lot less formal, um, and put a lot more memes and things like that on it. And that's having a big impact. We've seen our engagement go up loads just from stopping all sales talk on Facebook particularly and really focusing on, you know, spreading a bit of joy and cheer and the old political message. And our most popular um, post ever was a picture of a glass of Dettol saying, cheers, Trump. And that, like, just absolutely blew up. So, right. like, humour, like what you're saying about injecting some humour and personality is, is, like, spot on that we've found. Absolutely. And it's interesting, I had a client of mine, he's a telecoms guy, so he's quite a techie guy and one of the things, because he's working from home, and, and he was actually um, talking to some of his customers and one of his kids ran through the, through the kitchen. And they suddenly started talking about families and he said, I've never talked about personal things to my clients before. I suddenly realised that actually quite a few of them are quite human. And actually this whole idea of finding different ways of doing it can be a way of just trying to question and challenge what we do and, and how we do it. So let's I'll carry on if that's okay and get back to sharing the screen. There we go, sorry. And um, so I've talked about how to, to do these things. We're going to move on to this whole idea of adding value. And this is maybe touching on some of these things. And I view the chamber doing this well by running events for people. Not everybody's coming to them, but those that want to, they're there for them. But idea three is to give your customers a damn good listening to. And some things you might want to consider. Maybe there are times to create some conversations to find out what they're thinking and what they're wanting. And just how they're feeling. And actually finding out what their concerns and issues are, where their pain is, and what their thoughts and views are about the future. And I'm not saying it has to be a huge, full, in-depth analysis and questionnaire. But one of the things that we're sort of doing with quite a few of our clients is just having phone conversations. Maybe you can, one of my clients came with a thing called a virtual coffee. It's a drop-in center where they actually said, well, we're going to give you a call, have a chat. But they actually have a semi-structured questionnaire just to get some questions and thoughts going. A couple of those I've seen doing it via Survey Monkey because I haven't got time. And some questions for you to consider. And again, I'm not suggesting you ask all these questions. But just get to start prompting and thinking thing about these things. But what do they see as being their biggest concerns and issues? What problems is this causing? What would your solution be? What do they think the solutions would be? How do you think we could help them? What do we need from a supplier? What do they need from a supplier like us? What one thing could we do better to help you? And those are the questions you might you create some conversations with some of your customers. And then I got going with six others. Um, what's the one thing we should never stop doing? What else could we should we be offering? Who could we learn from? When this is all over, what we want for a supplier like us? How likely to continue doing business with us in the future? Why, why not? We're actually embarking on it. I speak at a lot of conferences and we have a number of speaker agencies and we've just started a process where we've emailed them all and we're actually doing it. We've got somebody from outside our business, a friend, who's actually just giving them a conversation and we're finding that lots of us are quite happy to talk because in some cases they've got lots of time. So maybe just finding out a bit about what your customers think could actually be a step for you to consider and actually try and can you identify and solve some of their problem that could, that's just the word could, create opportunities. But again, there are some that might want to talk to you. Don't force it. Don't push it. The research is suggesting that customers are looking for people to solve and fix their problems. So how well do you actually understand what your customers think and want? And don't forget, you might be saying, I know completely, Andy, did you see the moonwalking bear? Are you really clear? So again, some things to consider. Create conversations with your customers. Get to know them and their needs. Consider doing the same with other contacts, other people that signpost people towards you. And also, don't forget your people. What are they thinking? What are they feeling? How are they getting on with all this stuff? Idea four. This is how I do about delighting customers. Our definition of customer delight is surprising with the level of service you provide. And if I could just stress, 
This is not have a nice day. Customer delight is about exceeding expectations. Let's exceed them in a positive way. Uh, and back in the real world, I remember anybody here being relieved when you go into a shop, a number of staff knows what they're talking about. Um, it's, it's the customer, the business that delivers what they're going to do on time. Um, it isn't having a go at you, Angela. I did some work with a bunch of entrepreneurs recently before this was all over. And one of them said, oh, yeah, it's the law firm that brings you back and said they were going to. Somebody else went, no, it's the law firm that brings you back. And they actually found that these things about level of expectations are different in different sections. But this is not have a nice day. And this is not the McDonaldization of your business. Not that you can get in at the moment, because if they're not open, if they're, if they're shut, you can't get in. If they are open, there's queues five miles long to get in. I don't know if you know, actually, at McDonald's head office training center in Chicago, um, they're actually experimenting. Rather than actually say, have a nice day, they're actually saying, missing you already. This is not what this stuff's about. I'm not knocking McDonald's. Some would argue very successful business. In fact, many years ago, I was very lucky. I used to live and work in San Diego, California. I used to run a little building come from a mate of mine. Every morning at seven o'clock, I used to walk down Pacific Beach to my building site. And in San Diego, California, seven o'clock in the morning, the sun is always shining. The sky is always blue. There's beautiful white frothy waves crashing onto the golden sands. I feel like being at Cleethorpes. And overlooking McDonald's, overlooking Pacific Beach, was a McDonald's. And I used to walk in there every morning at seven o'clock to be greeted by the cast from Baywatch. Hi Andy, how are you this morning? I get my sausage egg McMuffin, my decaffeinated coffee. They say, you have a great day now. And it set me up for it. It's fantastic. When I go to McDonald's in Worksop, and this kid goes, enjoy your meal, pal. You learn very quickly that works in McDonald's ain't going to work in your business, works in California, ain't going to work in Rotherham. We've got to work out what does this mean for our customers? Great example, uh, there's a, a speaker in Australia uh, called Marty Wilson. One of the things that he actually did for when the, particularly when the toilet roll uh, crisis was on, he actually sent personalised toilet rolls to his customers just to say he was thinking of them. Little way of just sort of differentiating himself from his customers, from his competitors. Customer delight is about exceeding expectations. It's not buy one, get 10 free. It's not just giving stuff away for free. So if you can apply these things to your customers, it produces a wow reaction. It appears spontaneous and unexpected. It's the personal touch. It makes customers feel valued. It's genuine and it's memorable. And what I'm suggesting here, can you apply these ingredients to your customers? A phone call that just asks, how are you doing? Could be the way of doing this. How about I saw the thought of you, a bit of information, a bit of advice, something you saw somebody else doing, you could send to them, that actually might help them. Again, it could be you do this with a handwritten note. Jill ordered some goods from a product from a business um, called Getting Personal. And it's got some nice personalized notes from the staff who actually done it. Not a big deal, but it just personalized the experience. Thank you. Thank you. We actually got a lovely note from a customer of ours, that we'd actually, from a supplier of ours, that we'd actually paid. He said, really appreciate that in these tough times, you've paid us on time. Could we say thank you very much? Really appreciate it. You could do this in a bit more of a modern way. You might not do something as sophisticated as that, but are you just saying thank you that you're here for your customers and letting them know? So good, how, how good are you at delighting your customers? And again, if you want to just think about how you could actually do that, and sit down if you've got a team, get your team together or do this on your own. But just think about this, if your customers were to say this, yes, they dealt with me professionally, but what completely blew me away was, what would that be? Yes, they were professionally, what completely blew me away was, could that help you generate some ideas to delight your customers? 
Zappos are a business I spoke a lot about, an amazing business in the US. Uh, they sell shoes and trainers online, uh, sort of 24 seven, amazing business about customer service. They've actually set up a, an emergency hotline called customer service for anything. You can ring them up, just ask them any question about anything. And they have actually had stories of doctors ringing up for PPE and they've actually supplied them, they've found people that supply them. I'm not saying that's right for you, but they're just demonstrating their dramatic difference by offering customer service for anything. Idea five, recognize that shift happens. We're in this very, very fast moving world. And if you actually start looking at the choices you've got as a business, you can go backwards or you can go forwards. You can recover or you can actually renew and use this opportunity to renew what you're doing and how you're doing it. And I think the other one for me is that people can go, oh, when this is all over, we'll get back to normal. Or maybe we can actually start saying, okay, what's our new world? Can we create the new normal? And one of the ways of looking at this is to maybe just think a bit about this, create a bit of time. Think about your customers. Think about your marketplace. Think about your people. And try and answer these questions. What are the behaviours that will change or have changed? What are the behaviors that are happening out there that will actually change in terms of how people go out and do things? Customers, suppliers, staff. What are the implications for you on what you do? And the third one for me on this is what are the opportunities and threats from this? So those questions, what are the behaviors that will change, have changed, and how people are going about doing things? What are the implications for you and what you do? What are the opportunities and threats? And then a fourth question, the big one, what do you need to do? There's a chance to start reflecting and reflecting on these things, but then it's about doing things. How clear of a picture of the future do you actually have in terms of what people are going to be doing? Now, we can't predict the future, but there may be some signs that are coming on. But necessity is the mother of invention, said Plato. And sometimes we have to find ways of doing things that actually we hadn't originally planned. So what does this look like for your business? And that leads us to idea six, which is about reshaping your offer. And some things to consider here. When you start looking at this, there are lots of things we can reshape, but some three questions I want to get you to, to consider. Maybe consider and reshape what you offer. Reshape how you offer it. And maybe reshape who you offer it to. Just some things to consider. So here's some, some examples. So first of all, what you offer. PJ Taste. I don't know if anybody knows PJ Taste. They're a catering business in Sheffield. Uh, they do weddings, bar mitzvahs, corporate stuff. Um, clearly, lots of their customers are not having events. So one of the things they've actually had to do is deliveries to homes. They've come with lots of nutritious meals where they'll actually can be collected, delivered to your home. You actually get a, a week's worth. They've actually drastically demonstrably different in approach to what they're actually doing. Um, not necessarily, again, this is good news for everybody uh, from what we've heard, but proactive insurance business in Doncaster and Sheffield. Uh, one of the things they've now introduced is HR consultancy and health and safety advice. They've actually found that they've built that into what they're doing. It's been accelerated through this process. Audible have been offering free books, particularly kids' books, actually engage a new group of customers. City Grab, and this scene, are familiar with City uh, City Taxis. City Taxis on the first weekend of the coronavirus outbreak um, lost 80% of their revenue. 80%. The City Grab app was something they were already developing, but they've accelerated it and basically allows you to, they've linked up with lots of local restaurants, bars, and they will actually get food delivered to you. And again, what I think is interesting to get the, the profile going, some brilliant stuff. We did an event with Arnie Singh recently. Um, at weekends, the money that they actually charge goes to local charities and they're actually getting some fantastic feedback. But City Grab is moved from Sheffield, it's coming to Rotherham, it's in Barnsley, it's in Doncaster. They're actually selling the app itself and the whole application around the country. They're in Liverpool, they're in Derby. But City Grab is the thing that's actually kept them going. It's a completely new offer for their customers. I'm sure you've seen him. Joe Wicks, the man himself, he completely changed what he did, changed his offer. He's gone online. And we thought anything that Joe can do, we could do too. 
So we've got BE with Andy and Jill, which is a short business exercise that we do every day. We do a short video with a lesson we've learned and actually share that. And again, we'll put some links to that. You can see that. But we also recognize that um, businesses aren't going to come to conferences. Businesses can't have us going in doing training. But luckily, we've managed to get some support from Sheffield City Region Skills Bank. And you can now do online training sessions and strategic away days and team builds. You get 8% funding from it. I mean, it's about 60 quid a person. Advert over. What I'm sort of saying here is there are other ways of doing things. It's all about what you offer. It's also about maybe how you offer it. It's about maybe reshaping your processes. Giraffe, who are a business in Sheffield that uh, design, develop, manufacture um, equipment for disabled, uh, physically disabled people around the world, around the country, but also around the world. Um, but they actually used to have experts going in and measuring people up for their, for their equipment. They couldn't do that, so they created an app that allows people to do the measurements. Actually helps them do it themselves. They can send the stuff to them. They can still keep producing and delivering a great service to them. Time Out Magazine is now Time In Magazine. When they really saw National Theatre Live, they actually decided rather because people can't come and see them, they put lots of their massive productions live on YouTube just to get people engaged, but you could then donate to them, keep it going. I just heard this morning, if it's true or not, but Meadow Hall apparently are talking about one of the things they're looking at doing when they do reopen. All the shops will actually have a traffic light system where you can go in or out. Core things can be the same, but actually offering it and making it easy for people to, to deal with. There's a restaurant in Maryland who's actually going about trying to find a different way of keeping their customers socially distanced when they open as a bar. We've got to find other ways of doing things. Um, making it easy, I think, is a big one. Standing your customers' cues, if you like. What's it like to be a customer of your business? Amazon Go, this was something developed far before this ever came in. But this is an Amazon, it's a store in Seattle. Where basically, if you've got your Amazon phone, and it's a grocery store, you walk in with your phone in your pocket, in your purse, you walk in, you get your sandwich, you get your crisps, you get your drink, you walk straight out again. Now, my father-in-law, Bill, who's 81, lives in Woolworth, says they've been doing that in Barnsley for years. He can't see what the big deal is. This whole idea of making things easier. But that already exists. There's going to be 8,000 of those rolled out around the world. That was before any of this happened. But more locally. Again, that doesn't suit everybody, but it's just this whole, whole idea of just shaping and changing what they do and, and how they do it. So find ways to make it easier for your customers in this new world. I've got a good friend of mine and he's um, a driving instructor. And he's a bit worried about how they're gonna be dealing with things when things go back because of the whole of social distancing. Um, and I actually came up with this idea for him, but he wasn't over impressed with it. Um, but it's also quite interesting because this whole idea about how some customers are up for this and some aren't. Um, the way we introduce new technology, not everybody is actually going to accept it. Um, this is a guy that took his mum um, out in his uh, driverless car, but everybody actually reacts to the progress that, as others do. So again, it's about choosing the right customers. And that leads us on to the third statement on this one, who you offer things to. And just sort of back in the, before all this stuff came out, nearly half UK business said they actually find it difficult to define their target audience and don't actually know where their most profitable products or services come from. I think this is a great time to review that and actually find out 
who your best customers are. Because what we actually see 3D businesses do is that they choose them or lose them. They focus on the customers they want to work with. You have a clear focus on the sort of clients and customers you want to work with when this is all over. Who are your best customers? I remember doing a seminar some years ago with a client, we got all the sales guys together, and they were going, oh, these are our best customers, and they listed them. Why they, oh, they spend loads with us. And the FD said, yeah, but they never pay. And one of the things about we just think a bit about is who are your best customers? Sometimes we're all so busy, we don't always actually create the time to actually reflect who our best customers are. Just a little example, this is just an example, it's not proof of anything. In our old business, Hallmark's business development, we grew our business training and development to about a dozen people. And we were about 10 people, and we'd grown quite big in terms of turnover, as far as we were concerned, but not in terms of profitability. We were getting busier and busier and busier, but not more profitable. We took a bit of time out to look at, we could spot where the opportunities and threats were in terms of what was happening and what wasn't. Uh, we looked at size of business, we looked at sector, there's no pattern. So we came up with this, and this was just right for us, not for everybody, just an example that we did it. We looked at our clients in terms of high entrepreneurial, low entrepreneurial. High entrepreneurial was one decision maker, he or she would make the decision and go, yeah, let's get on with it. Low was it was a board of directors, or it was a local authority, it was about 15 people ever talked to each other. High selling opportunities was low selling opportunities, no money to spend, no people to train and develop. High selling opportunities was they got money, they got a willingness to spend it, and they actually got people to train. A clients were typically people that were growing their businesses, owner managers, we developed a relationship with them and said, this is great, can you now do this? Bs came to every single free seminar we ever put on. They loved what we did, we got no money. Cs took a long time to get into them, but if we did, we actually developed the relationship and Ds um, will stay well away from. When we actually analysed it, we would find we were putting as much time into the Bs as we were on Cs. We'd go to one, do all these free seminars, all this wonderful stuff. Everybody thought we were great. How about the money? We identified that A's and C's were right for us. Different plan for each business. I'm not saying it's right for everybody here. I'm just going to get you to think a bit about it. Who are your best customers? One of the ways of looking at this is to think value for time. Not how much they spend with you, but how much time, effort, resources it costs you to actually service that and look after it. So just think a bit about who your best customers are. For example, there are some customers who will happily pay more if it means better service. There are some that want the balance, there are some that don't. Now, it's about getting the balance right here. What's right for you and for your customers? So what do you need to reshape when it comes to what you do and how you do it? Do you need to stand in your own customer's shoes, see what it's like in terms of what you offer and how you offer it? Identify their problems and pain. This might create opportunities. Take them away if you can identify opportunities to develop new ways of doing things and look at ways of maximizing them. And then also when it starts thinking about the customers you should be focusing on. Spend some time working out who your best customers are. Spend some time establishing what they want, what they need, and how you're gonna get more of them in the future. You might also wanna consider what you do with your worst customers when this is all over. Because we actually actually see there are some customers you may need to start saying no to. These are quotes from people who've been on Thompson holidays. Try and delight these customers. The beach was too sandy. No one told us that we're fishing the sea, our children were startled. Things should be explained the brooch that the local store does not sell proper biscuits like custard creams or ginger nuts. And my favourite is laser local shopkeepers to close in the afternoons not to want to buy things in the time. It's yes, that it should be banned. What I'm saying here is there's some customers that you'll never be able to delight, you don't have to make money out of. Maybe this is the time to start working on those or working out who they are and what they want. Here's a guy who's a butcher who I think has actually clearly decided which customers he wants and which he doesn't. And what I'm therefore suggesting that you might want to consider these six ideas. Get in touch with them. Do it in a human way. Create some dialogue not diatribes, in a way that engages with your customers, in a way that works for them. Give them to listen to. Create a bit of time to find out what they think, what their, where their pain is, where their problems are. Find ways to exceed their expectations. Recognise that shift is happening. Can you create your new norm? What does that look like? What are your behaviours that your customers will be demonstrating that you can maximise? And what are the things that you need to reshape to actually make sure you're relevant to your customers in this dramatically and demonstrably different world. And because this is all about exceeding expectations, 
here is an extra action that you might want to consider. Do something. Have a go. Take action, not notes. Try and work out what you need to do from all these things and just maybe consider one thing. Take that one step, it will lead to other things. Vision without action is hallucination. Paint a picture what you're going to do, but then do it. I'd also suggest take that first step, which is why maybe having a conversation with your customers, standing in your own queues, just seeing what other people are doing, might actually help you identify what it is you need to do. And it might be about doing something a bit scary, never done before, because we are in this dramatically and demonstrably different world. Some options, if you want to just very quickly, I'll put some toolkits for you to download. If you do want to get involved with the business exercises, go on those. Again, you can watch the videos. But equally, just get in touch. I'm not going to try and flog you anything. If anything we can do to help you, we'll signpost you in the right direction. Link in with us, get involved with us, anything we can do to help that. We'll do all we can to, to make it work. But I can get all these quotes from all these wonderful world leaders. That's the important one. Don't just stand there, do something. And this thing about understanding and knowing your customers, I spoke at a conference uh, last year at the University of Newcastle with about 150 young entrepreneurs, all under 21. And I put that slide up and they all looked blankly. They had no idea who Dick Dastardly or Muttley was. And I told them there was only one action they took was to Google, stop the pigeon and wacky races and watch some proper cartoons. If that's the only thing you do in this lockdown, I would encourage you to keep looking at what proper cartoons are actually like. Last little thing to think about. Um, Chef presentations, they were actually asked their customers, this was a business did research, what customers are looking for from businesses in coronavirus. They said, please just use three words. These are the top three words that came out. Fast, helpful, friendly. And it's quite clear that the way we deal with our customers now, I think will have a massive impact on what happens after. And just to try and reflect on this, take you back a few years, Back to 1984, nothing to do with George Orwell. In 1984, in the pit village of Dinnington, where I lived and where I worked previously, um, the strike was on. And in Dinnington High Street, there were two shops that actually rented video recorders. Anybody remembers a video recorder? I'll show it for those younger members of the audience, I want you to Google them. But basically, you could hire videos and you paid a weekly or a monthly amount. There were two retailers in the high street in Dinnington. One of them said, we know that there's not much money around because the money you've got is going on food and kids. So we will suspend all payments. The other said, we want to carry on paying us. We want your money. You've got to keep doing it. The strike finished after 12 months. Within four months, the video shop that actually made people pay had gone bust. People disappeared. We're not on strike here, but I will encourage you to think long term. So there might be things that you offer and give to your customers now that you're not going to make lots of money out of, but actually help you build relationships. You maintain, manage, and maximize those relationships. When we do these things, we often find people can be divided into three groups. There are those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, those that ask what happens or just goes flying by. Please make sure you're one of the ones that make things happen. Have a go at stuff. Anything I can do to help, we're going to ask some que answer some questions now. I will say thanks very much for your time. And last little phrase, if you always do what you've always done, what is it you get? People say you always get the same thing. No, I think you'll get left behind. It's a fast moving world. So make sure you do something, have a go at it. Thanks for your time. And missing you already. Thanks very much indeed. I will take questions. I'll get with the screen and hopefully, if anybody has got any questions, either written down or shout them out, please feel free to uh, to do that. Thanks, Andy. I think that was excellent. Uh, Mark got a question. He's got his digital hand up. Mark, do you want to, or are you just, are you just clapping? clapping. Just clapping. Thank you. A digital clap. That's the first. <laughs> I think for me, Andy, you, 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 you've touched on a number of areas there. And I think people and businesses in this might relate to it is we're not sure if we can sell. And if we do go selling stuff, is it morally right? Do people want it? But I think the message is it's how you do it, isn't it, really? Absolutely. I don't think there's anything wrong with if there's an opportunity that comes up, you, 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 you take it. I think there's a difference between exploiting people and I think there's a difference between pushing things at people. If a customer expresses a need for, uh, for, for something, 
and you you can provide that service, then please feel free to do it. You know, I'm, last thing I'm sort of saying is we've all got to learn a living. We've got to keep this thing going. So there's nothing wrong with that at all. There are lots of you know. IT businesses providing a fantastic support and experience to customers who are actually doing this um, as it's keeping it going. If you don't do that, how are you going to do it? City Grab, I think, is a great example of a business that's taking opportunity to spot the opportunity. Nobody's forcing you to use them, and they're not ripping people off in terms of doing it. So there are opportunities there. Please, 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 uh, you know, have, have a go at it and, and, and look for the opportunities, which is why I think asking the questions can be a great way of, of actually doing that. Mm. So I, 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 saw, I saw somebody raise the hand. Um, oh, was it Jackie? I'm going to do, I'm going to try and unmute everybody, and we can just have a discussion if that's all right. I am Jay. Just wanted to say, really enjoyed it. Only came in for the last half hour, and I've heard you do something similar to this before. But what's really good is it that reminds you because you sometimes forget. And you've got to change your habits. One of the things that you said that really makes sense to me is value for time. Yeah. Because it's this thing about being productive. And I, I heard somebody from our Sheffield City region saying that um, Sheffield City region was, in terms of productivity for the whole of the UK, it was way behind. And um, as you know, know, I engage a lot with public sector. And um, I often say to them, how much time are you having to do to repeat that same thing? It's just every minute of my time has got a cost on it. And while ever I'm doing that, I'm not doing something else. And we've also, we've got a business, as you know, Andy, at Skincare Yorkshire. And um, me and my husband have got different ways about how we manage customer care, which right. is quite good. He's straight in there, you know, <laughs> what to tell them how it is. And I'm saying, no, oh, just take a step back. But, you know, I remember him saying to me at some time, um, that customer is just not worth having. And I said, why? I said, I've not even provided the product yet. And he's been on the phone 15 times. Mm -hmm. And he says, and I just know that for the amount of product I sell that guy, it's just not going to be worth the hassle. Um, and we do have discussions about that, but he's absolutely right. Um, sometimes the cost of the sale is not worth the input of the time. And it's very hard to say to somebody, I don't want your custom. Um, what we do now, we sometimes say, I think we've got somebody else that you're at, you know, their products might be better suited to, to, to than, than ours. But I think for me, that value for time and identifying your A, B, C, D or customers is probably one of the most poignant thing I've heard, especially when you're coming out of lockdown, because everybody's going to want to just grab every single customer mm. that you've got. But it's doing that analysis, really. Absolutely. Of and it's giving you time out to reflect on that. You no, know, but it's almost like you've given a gift in many respects. If you, I mean, you know, we have tried to put positive spin on most things. But this period of time, reflect on your business, reflect on where you want to go with your business. Sometimes you don't have enough time to spend on reflecting on the strategy of your business because you're that busy in it. And um, I think that's another message I've got out of today as well, Andy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, you know, I, I think that for me, it doesn't have to be for lots of us, the new decimal point, how much time we spend. But if you were to just look at how much time resource is required to maintain that customer, to look after them, and you can actually almost do, you know, a cost per hour, you can actually analyze it and then start saying two things then, right, what can we do to either make it more valuable? So could we charge them more? Could we do it more efficiently? Could we do it more effectively? Or could we not do it? Particularly, and this is the key bit, if it's stopping us dealing with the customers we want to deal with, that do want to spend the money, do want to pay for it. And, and, and I've certainly done it in the past where we actually say to people, um, I'm afraid we can't obviously maintain, we can't give you the service you deserve uh, for the level of service you actually want. We're going to go somewhere else. What's quite interesting is, quite interesting, every now and then they come back. Uh, can we have another yeah. drink? about this please because yeah. they've actually had to realize that they couldn't get it um and it's just trying to find that balance but once you get that picture it just then helps shape where you do your networking where you do your marketing where you actually get out there and do it if you can paint that picture of the ideal customer uh, we did some work with a business they were an engineering business and we just came with this again some years ago came up with some very simple criteria that they looked for their best customers one was this one that they were credit worthy they could pay the bills because they had a lot of customers that couldn't. Uh, one was that they had a focus on quality. They actually looked for evidence of that. The one was that the decision maker was actually on site. They were engineers. They dealt with other engineers on site. Actually found that quite a few of their customers had got head offices down in Surrey. There was accountants making decisions. But the, the sales guys, when they went, would actually score the business out of 10 against those criteria. And they had permission 
to the MD saying, look, no, they're not for us. And that's what they actually did. If they were on the line, they might sort of take we'll have a go at it. But they actually gave people permission just to sort of look at, just choose them or lose them, who do we want to, who do we want to deal with? And, and that can actually give people a, a bit more focus. Has anybody else got any questions or comments that they'd like to discuss? Put Andy on the spot. That's what he's here for now. I've just got something else, if I may, Shane. Cross um, you, did you know you talked? You said it's not a plug, Andy. Uh, that you can get eighty percent off your training if you go um, through the Skills Bank. Yes. Um, I just think so many businesses would benefit from having somebody to help them reflect to where they are and where they want to go. And it's just how do you get that message out? Because you've obviously you've got courses that you run on this, and yeah. if it's only going to cost twenty percent because you get an 80% grant. How are we getting that message out to people? Because I've spoke to loads of people and they said to me, can you do a, a seminar? Can you bring people together? Because I was thinking in the sector I'm working at the moment, we're talking about the great assets and the entertainment, that side of business. And they're all looking to share ideas about social distancing and how they do that. Uh, but it'd be quite good if you got um, a, a model that you could help people shape the way their future now you're getting that message out that that helps and, there and because we, i think people would love it go ahead on monday um to, to do so we're starting off by just talking to our existing clients and friends and saying this is what's available um but off you and again i'll put the link up there's, there's a skills bank website there's, it's not just from andy hansman consulting there are other people doing it as well um but they're trying to trying to make it easier for people to apply as well because mm. they used to have to go to a panel and take ages they're trying to they package it in a way that does that so we've developed this one as a bigger sort of a two hours two about two hour event where we can work within a company and get to really look at that value for time things like that um but i think what we're also doing is 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 just getting it out to our networks my understanding mm -hmm. is that the skills about themselves are going to start pushing it but i think to do it fair and i think i've seen this over the years i've always seen an invisible wall between businesses and the people providing the support and funding uh, we often see ourselves as the people that come in the middle of it because for whatever reason, even people either don't see it or, or aren't looking. And it's just about how to educate people on, on actually doing that. So I think it's um, it's trying to find routes. And I think it's doing things like this. You know, and I was talking to, to Shane earlier that maybe we could do something, I don't know, by the chamber to, yeah. to, to look at doing this. That, that if we've now been approved, we can do it in a way that supports everybody. I, I don't know. That's a, we'll talk about it. That's what we want to try and do. Mm. Definitely. Thank you. Is there anybody else? I'm just conscious we've gone over an hour, that's all. Um, so I'm just wanting to see if there's any more comments or questions by anybody. If not, we will wrap up there. And a big thank you to Andy. Thank you for this morning. Thank you. It was excellent. Thank you. Thank you. We've got claps going off and virtual claps going off. It's brilliant. So thank you for that. What we'll do, we'll send up a follow email um, and I'll have Andy's link on there so you can actually get the slides off as well. Um, so you can have a look back and recap but the video will be online as well so thank you very much thank enjoy you. the rest of your week just to let you know the yeah. chamber we're running a couple of events this week we've got speed networking taking place tomorrow at 10 o'clock and then we've got how does that work Shane how, how will that work you'll have to you'll have to join us Natalie and have a look <laughs> 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 it's basically we've got the function there we can offer breakout rooms so we put you all in breakout rooms so you can have a one-to-one -one with every well we're trying to do everybody but it, it doesn't necessarily work with everybody because it's a computer automated sy uh, system where you might end up buddying up with somebody else that you've already buddied up with so it's really good fun we did it a couple of weeks ago and it was excellent it just gives people that social element of, of this stuff but also to promote the business from what they normally do at networking events so We've done a couple of them so far and they've been really successful. So they're on our website. And then on Friday at two o'clock, we're running a quarterly economic review, which is with the four chambers in the Sheffield City region, which does include East Midlands, actually. And they're hosting the event. And that, that's uh, we've done a survey for the past couple of weeks, probably a month on local issues, local economy issues. And we're running an event on that with a Q&A panel. So that's they're all on our website. So I'll put the links on there for... Uh, on the follow-up email so you can get booking on to things is there anything else while well, we've got members in the room anybody want to say something ask something no all good then enjoy the rest of your day and i'll speak you to you too. soon thank you to Andrew. thank you very much thanks Andrew. thanks thank Andy. bye everybody bye, bye. 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 Take care.
I'll just stop the recording.